Hi, this is Maggie from Design Code Debug Repeat. If you're a beginning programmer, a beginning game programmer, a programming teacher, a beginning data analyst, or if you just find this content interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll be posting lessons, tips, and other cool programming stuff regularly. Now today we're in Eclipse. And we're imagining a scenario today where somebody has given you a JUnit file and you are going to write a class that is going to be tested by this JUnit test case class. So how do you create a project and include that JUnit test case in it and then run the JUnit tests and then interpret them? So we'll start by creating a project. So we're going to say new Java project and we'll call it uh, rectangle testing because we're going to go ahead and use our old rectangle class, but this time we'll be writing the rectangle class ourselves. And I'm going to say finish. Now on my project over here in the Package Explorer, I'm going to right click and choose Properties. We can also choose it from the Project menu. And I'm going to go to the Java Build Path and click on the Libraries tab and then click on Class Path. And then I'm going to click on Add Library and I'm going to choose JUnit. I'm going to click Next and I'm going to choose JUnit 5 from the drop down and then choose finish and then I can click apply and close and you'll notice now we've got JUnit as part of our project. Now I'm imagining that we've been given the test cases that we're going to use. So I'm going to right click on the SRC or source folder and choose import from the context sensitive menu that comes up and then I'm going to choose general and file system and I'm going to navigate to that file and import it into my project. Okay, so here it is, rectangle test, and it's got lots of errors in it because it's testing a class called rectangle, which I haven't written yet. So I've already written a rectangle class. Let's imagine that I've been given a spec in the form of this Java doc and I have a constructor and two methods, get area and get perimeter. This is very similar to the rectangle class in the video in which we imported a class file into our project. But this time we're writing it, we're not using it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I've already written it. I'm going to import it into the project. Okay, and now that I've imported it, all of those X's have gone away because I've got a rectangle class, but also, importantly, my class is going to match any of the method calls and constructors that are in these test cases. So for example, we see the constructor being invoked here, and there is only one constructor for this class, and it's being passed two double values. And my rectangle class has a constructor right here, line 22 to 20, 25, I guess, that takes two double constructors. So there's no error there. Um, down here, I'm invoking both get area and get perimeter. And down here, the test case is invoking get area. So this is the first place where you might see errors if you're adding a JUnit test to a project if you haven't written the class to specifications that are uh, clear in the syntax. So if, if you aren't, um, for example, returning the correct data type and that's being used in a test case, or if you aren't taking the correct number of parameters or they're in the wrong order, if they're the wrong type, then you're going to get errors in your test cases. So that's the first thing to check. And I'll just show you as an example, suppose I had made the length in the constructor an integer. Now we can see there are errors in all of these constructors because what the person who wrote the test cases is passing in is a double. So that's the first place where you might see an error 
and so you want to go back to the specification and make sure um, I think I just accidentally cut that instead of saving um, you want to go back to the specification and make sure that you're following the spec okay so once you've got your test case in and you don't have any uh, syntax errors then you can run the test case so I'm going to just click uh, the run button to run the test case and over where the package explorer was now I have a new tab J unit and I can see that there were two tests and one of them failed test constructor error checking has an X that's the one that failed and if we go down to the failure trace I get more information so for example it says expected zero but was one and um, we can double click on that and it, it just shows us again what it expected and what the actual output was but um, we can also see what line that was on so right here wrecked bad in it both get area um, it expected zero but it was one so you can dig into that you can look at what values are being passed into the test if you have access to the the actual code you can look at what values are being passed into the test and try to figure out what went wrong now in this case why would it expect zero if it was passing in negative one so why would it expect to get an area of zero if what it's passing in for initialization values for the length and the width is negative one? And if we go to the spec, we notice that it says if either or both parameters are negative, set both to zero. And did we do that? No, we're just setting the fields um, I think it means it should be a little clearer here it should say set both fields to zero so if either or both parameters are negative set both fields to zero well I would talk to the person who wrote the Java doc that is what is intended here so suppose you try to fix this so you say oh okay and by the way this is a place where I think the ternary operator is is a good choice an easy choice so we could say oh I want to set length equal to well if length is less than or equal to zero then I'm gonna set it equal to zero so that will take care of oh sorry not not equal to uh, if it's less than zero if it's negative I'm gonna set it equal to zero and otherwise I'm going to set it equal to the length parameter and I'll do the same thing with width so if the width value that gets passed in is less than zero then I'm just going to set it to zero and otherwise I will set the width field to the width parameter. Okay, so I think I'm all set. Go back, I'm going to run the tests again. Oh no, I get the red bar. We want the green bar. And now it's failing. Uh, it expects zero um, actual 20 and it's the same test that's failing, test constructor error checking. I thought I fixed the error checking in my constructor so let's see where is it failing this time it's getting a bad perimeter why does it expect a zero on the rect bad init length so rect bad init length we pass in a bad value for length but a good value for width so length will have gotten set to zero but width won't so again if I go back and look at the Java doc it says if either or both set both to zero oh oh set both to zero so if the length is less than zero or oops that's not an or or if the width is less than zero then I want to set length to zero otherwise I'll set it to length if the width is less than zero or the length is less than zero then I'm going to set it to zero. So if either of them is zero, now I'm not so sure about the ternary operator. If either of them is zero, we're going to set both to zero. Otherwise, we're going to set them. I think it's still okay. I like it for assignment statements. All right, let's let's try again. So so and let's think about it. Um, so if the length is is negative or the width is negative, then I'm setting length to zero. Yes. Yeah, so this should take care of for both of the fields. If either parameter is negative then I have a nonsensical rectangle and I'm supposed to set it to zero that's just the spec 
who knows, you know, in what context this, this is going to make sense. But the spec is if either of these parameters, which are meant to initialize the fields of my object, are negative, then I'm just going to set the whole thing to zero because it didn't make sense. So let's go ahead and test it. And I get the green bar. That's what you want. That means that your class, as you've written it, has passed all of the tests that were written. This isn't necessarily an exhaustive set of tests over here. I was just writing some tests so that I could illustrate what would happen if we had some tests go bad and we tried to fix it, but then it continued to go bad. So I wanted you to see a few different ways that this could go bad and how to interpret those test results. Mostly I wanted to show you how to add a JUnit test case to your project in case you are in this situation. For example, if you're taking a course, maybe your professor has given you some JUnit tests and they've told you to write some classes to specs and the tests are they're there to help you. They're there to help you make sure that you're writing your class to all of the specifications. When you see a test case fail, you can go in, look at the specs again, look at your code, look at the test, and figure out where your code is failing so that you can fix it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have additional questions, if I didn't cover something that you're curious about, please feel free to write a comment. I will get back to you. Take care.